Hey Zoomers, welcome back to World Zoom. Happy you could join me again today. Hey, thanks for all the views and the subscriptions uh, from yesterday's video about people filing cases against expat in the Philippines. It made me think and I had some comments like, Paul, could you give a better example of what type of things uh, the expats are being reported on and what's being reported to the police, uh, the accusations that they were doing. So within just a couple minutes, I wrote down seven or eight different cases uh, that I could remember and thought of just happening in the last year uh, of what people have been reported on and some of the struggles and strife that it caused for them uh, in country in the Philippines. So I thought, wow, what a great topic idea to hear uh, what people are getting in trouble for. And far and away, the number one uh, that I've seen, especially for YouTubers, is like promoting a Filipino on YouTube. Uh, you probably know what I mean, but I'll explain a little bit further writing a headline that says, single 18-year-old in the Philippine looking for a foreigner. That is not allowed in the Philippines to be a matchmaker or someone promoting some sort of relationships. And the first thing I thought of is like, wow, there's a couple Filipinas that their entire channel does only that, bikini shows of youngsters, sometimes even under 18, uh, and they just uh, do whatever they want. But heaven forbid if an expat put uh, something out like Baby May does, for example. And I love Baby May, but that is her channel, right? And that's uh, how she gets her views. And great person. I really like her. Uh, but that is uh, what she does. That's how she does it. Either herself in a bikini or all of her friends and people that she meets in a bikini. And ultimately, they end up hooking up with foreigners for the most part. But there's been some expats that have tried the same type of thing. Meet this girl, you know, check this girl out, this girl's looking, and they got themselves in trouble. Especially uh, Calvin... Um, from Sunshine Shoulders. Those were the complaints against him on a couple different occasions. I actually never saw him actually do that. Uh, so someone uh, made a complaint anonymously uh, using a movie star's name and then a historical figure's name on a couple different occasions, but it was enough to get him a letter delivered to him, uh, forcing him to report to the police station and a review of the investigators to the extent they went through the entire library of his uh, YouTube videos looking for any evidence that he had been promoting uh, either prostitution or a matchmaking service in the Philippines. Luckily, he was vindicated, but he's always right on that tightrope of getting himself in trouble with the police, but he's a hoot, and you know that's just the nature of his show. But that's one of those ones that you can easily get a complaint, probably coming from you know, uh, the, the Filipinos that are involved with that young lady, not her, not necessarily herself, or from other YouTubers that are mad at him, uh, you know, because that's just the jealous nature of the Dumaguete uh, YouTubers. They would definitely be ones uh, to, to do exactly that. Um, number two, insulting, embarrassing, or causing a scene in public that causes a loss of face, uh, to a Filipina. That's Tim K's current situation. Went in a business on Leyte, got into a shouting match in the business. It went out into the street, no fisticuffs, but certainly loud and boisterous. That was enough to get a case uh, filed against him that had him go to the wrong guy or to the police to try and address the situation. Uh, that is one thing that, you know, if you give someone the bird and tell them to F off, uh, or you shout at them or cause them embarrassment, even take their photo, even though unless they're privately in their home, uh, you can take a photo, a video of anyone that you want, you know, in the mall, unless they would specifically ask you uh, to delete that. You are allowed as a YouTuber to, to videotape someone unless they're in their private home. I know some of you are going to disagree, so go ahead 
and write the comments, but that is the law, and we've seen it uh, done time and time again. Uh, look at Philly in the Philippines. He's another one that's forever walking the tightrope and, and has had all sorts of issues doing exactly that in Angeles City uh, on Walking Street. Um, so that, there's another one. So we have, uh, you know, soliciting a young lady for view of your subscribers, and we have loss of face. Uh, we have the, the a land or home purchase uh, without the proper authorization, or at least it's reported to the authorities that you've bought land or bought a home. Remember, you can only buy a condominium um, you know, in your name, not land in your name, and not a home in your uh, name. Now, there are ways through a business entity that you are allowed to do that. Also, there's an enterprise zone by Clark on Luzon that allows you to do that. But some of the foreigners, uh, expats, are buying the land, but mostly it's in the wife or the wife's family uh, name, but it's still reported because the neighbors aren't happy about you know, an expat coming in and becoming a farmer and owning, you know, 80 or 100 acres or even changing the jungle into uh, homes that are being built. Saw this in Dowin a decent amount, not down by the ocean, but across the highway going up the mountain, uh, there were some cases filed against uh, expats uh, for building in that area. As far as I know, none of those complaints have been fruitful. None of them have materialized and showed any guilt or any wrongdoing by the expat, but it is very stressful. I mean, if you get a letter telling you to, to go meet with uh, detectives from a national police bureau, uh, that's something you just don't want to mess with in the Philippines. I mean, that can... Uh, you may have the opportunity to keep that neutral, but it can also go south uh, in, in a hurry. And remember, the Philippines is known for an unbelievable backlog uh, in getting uh, situations to court. So let's say your case is substantial enough they decide to detain you. You could easily, easily be in a, Thai, I'm sorry, in a Filipino prison for three to five years before your case is even heard. No one wants to come to the Philippines and end up in a Philippine jail based on some anonymous or some complaint of a Filipina that has an ax to grind against you. So I would urge caution because you may think it doesn't happen, but it does happen and you've seen it happen if you live there. Uh, the, uh, the next one is abuse of a Filipino, uh, the girlfriend or a wife. Now, if you did uh, those type of things. I mean, the spousal abuse or girlfriend abuse, I mean, it should be against the law. I'm glad it's against the law. But remember, uh, you know, just like in the U.S., a lot of these things are reported to ruin someone, ruin their career, ruin their, you know, their profession, uh, their reputation, cause them angst and loss of family and friends. Uh, another thing I have seen is that there's virtually no discipline, virtually no discipline of children by their Filipino parents in the Philippines. It's just not something that you see. They're well-mannered kids. They're great kids, but there's not a lot of discipline. Well, the Canadians come over there. The Australians come over there that really parent with an iron fist. The Americans come over. Uh, they have a girlfriend or wife that has previous children, and they're going to discipline those kids different than what the absentee Filipino uh, father would. And if things go south in the relationship, an abuse claim can and has been made against a lot of these expats. And that's a very serious charge uh, to say that you're abusing a child or causing harm to a child or to the woman herself. And, and we've seen these cases where they've documented, uh, you know, these bruising and the whippings and the, <clears throat> the actual uh, punishment by the expat on their stepchildren or wife. If they did it, they did it and deserve what they get. Uh, but just remember that if your relationship goes south and you're taking care of her kids, uh, don't put yourself in a position where that can be reported to the police because that can easily be a jail term uh, or deportation. Um, uh, the next one is not paying your debts. 
uh, owing money uh, to do different groups, whether that would be a business, an individual, a hospital. I mean, they can hold your passport. It's not quite like Dubai where you have to do uh, uh, you know, a security clearance, but you do, right? If you've been in the Philippines uh, more than six months, they do a cursory check uh, to make sure there are no complaints against you. If, if, they've, if you've been there more than one year, they do a complete background check on you before you leave the country. These are the kind of things that I'm talking about that will stop you from being able to get on that plane and depart. If you have something pending, it's like you know, promoting uh, women on your channel or having an abuse case from a stepchild or you, you were in sold or a case against you, I mean, your passport is going to be flagged. You're not going anywhere until you solve that. Debts are one of the things where an entity can come forward, make a complaint against you for not settling and paying your debt. And if you're not out of the country fast enough, you're on hold until uh, you can get it uh, figured out. They're not the only country, but it definitely, definitely happens. Why do you think they have a rule that if you're there more than a year, you have to go uh, through a police clearance to allow you to leave the country? It's exactly for these reasons, people fleeing uh, before things get reported uh, to the police and you're out of the country and off the hook for whatever you may or may not have done. Uh, but it, this definitely does happen. Uh, let's see. So um, working without authorization, oftentimes that doesn't uh, lead too far. Uh, you might get a warning. You probably don't even get called into the police station to that. But I had a video a few months ago about uh, people working in the Philippines, um, uh, you know, without a retirement visa. If you have a retirement visa and SRRV, you can pretty much do anything. But if you're there on that three-year tourist visa and you're working, that can present itself as a problem. So think about that. Much smaller on the scale of these items that I've lift, listed, but it is a possibility to get yourself uh, in a bit of trouble with the authorities. And lastly, if you've been accused of an accident, uh, almost any time there's an accident in the Philippines, if an, a foreigner or expat is involved, it's going to be your fault. I mean, I, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Whether the trike pulled up to the intersection, didn't stop at all, and pulled out in front of you, and you ran into the side of them or back of them, it's your fault. A pedestrian clipping with your side view mirror because they have to walk in the street there. Uh, a motorcycle coming and sliding in front of you, not using the turn signals. Whatever it is could be your fault. So if that person's injured or files a complaint against you, uh, both uh, in a criminal sense or normally in a monetary sense that you didn't fix the motorbike, didn't fix the trike, didn't pay for their hospital bills. Uh, you are on hold until that case gets settled or you can go and meet um, you know, meet with the family. You may recall uh, just in Elo Elo City a short time ago, there was an individual that uh, crashed his motorbike into a trike causing a decent amount of damage uh, to, to the trike. He got on to go back to Canada uh, to, and that's not that Philippines life, not them. He got on the plane to go back to Canada. He flew uh, to uh, Manila, and then they did the check there, and it flagged you know, that he had a case against him, and he was not authorized to leave the country. So he had to go back to Iloilo, uh, settle uh, his claim and his debt with the tricycle driver, wait still a couple weeks for that to get uh, cleared and settled up and be able to get his clearance report to be able to fly uh, out of the country. Now, why he didn't know that when he had to do the check before because he'd been there more than a year, don't know all those details. But but listen, I've just given you, you know, six, seven, eight scenarios where you could have a case filed against you whether you did anything or not, right? I mean, we get sued, people get sued in the U.S. all the time, but it's usually not a criminal type of thing. It's usually a civil case and you have a, uh, 
you know, a chance to be able to defend it. It's frustrating, it's stressful, it's even costly, but it's not like the Philippines where it goes from zero to 60, from nothing to criminal in one report, even from an anonymous individual. Um, I think the one against Sunshine Shoulders came from like Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt. You know, that was the actual complaint against him. So absolute nonsense. Uh, but it got him a couple visits uh, to the police and was super stressful, you know, for him. Couldn't travel, couldn't do anything uh, till it got fixed. So, you know, be calm in public. Uh, try not to set yourself up or do some of these kind of things I mentioned and think about those. And please let me know what I might have missed. Uh, these were just off the top of my head and thinking of friends or YouTubers that I knew. I'm sure there are dozens more. So let me know what you think. Uh, I, I urge you to use caution. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video from WorldZoom. Thanks for the subscriptions. I'll see you guys later on. Take care.